Hi, everyone. Um, th this is my first time in a session like this, so I don't really know how to start. I, I guess it makes sense to start with my name. My name is Anna Fick. Anna, short for Anastasia. I'm an only child, born in a small town in Minnesota, but we moved down to Oklahoma when I was just a baby. I grew up in the suburbs, which was a bit boring, but nice enough in its own way. Still, I was aching to run off to college in the big city. I wasn't really attached to anyone back home. I'm kind of a loner, and I don't go out of my way to make friends. College would be the perfect opportunity to really start my life, you know? College was where I first met Ruby. Ruby was... well, she was really something. I met her when I moved into my freshman dorm, room 122. She was just across the hall in room 123. I moved in before my roommate, so Ruby was the first person I met. She came bouncing over with her curly brown hair and glittering blue eyes and welcomed me to the community. You must be Anna, right? She came flying in just as Dad and I were struggling to set up my lofted bed. From Oklahoma? I yeah, hi. I extended my hand, leaving my dad to fight alone. You are... My name is Ruby. Ruby Somers. I live just across the hall from you. Her eyes sparkled bright against the freckles peppered across her face. I'm hoping we can be friends. Just let me know if you need anything, okay? I glanced into her room and saw her perfectly lofted bed. Well, actually, I think my dad and I could use your expertise in loft building. She lent a hand, and we had the bed lofted in no time, becoming close friends in the process. Sorry, I, I guess that's not really important. I, I just want you guys to know, okay? That's the kind of person Ruby was. The kind who would help a stranger without expecting anything in return. Anyway, after that, I, I started to spend most of my time with Ruby. We went through orientation week together. Without Ruby, I don't think I'd have met anyone else. She was really into those stupid icebreakers. Normally, I hate them. But somehow, she managed to make it really fun. I made lots of friends that first week, all thanks to Ruby. But no matter how many friends I made, Ruby was still special. We quickly became best friends. We ate together, had movie nights together, went to class together. We even went through the town's nearby haunted house together. Several times, in fact. Ruby and I grew ever closer over the rest of the semester. And as we got closer, I realized that there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about her. Her scar, for instance. I noticed it during one of our sleepovers. We'd been watching horror movies all night when I saw the thin pink line tracing down her collarbone and disappearing under her nightshirt. Hey, Ruby, what is that? She turned to look at me as I traced the path of her scar along my own skin. That was the first time I saw Ruby's eyes turn grim. Those blue eyes became dull like stone, and I saw something inside her just shut down. That... I don't like to talk about that. I could feel the ground beneath us become shaky as I pressed on. But why not? That was when she lifted her eyes to mine. Those painful, dull eyes as she let me in on a little secret. My past was not always a happy place. There are things that I can forget if I try. If you'll help me, I'd like to try. I know, that doesn't sound like much of a secret. But you have to understand, you have to! Everyone thought that Ruby was the happiest girl in the world. The fact that at one point in her life she'd had so much pain that it darkened those eyes... That was something she'd never willingly tell anyone. Well, anyone except me. So I helped her, just like she asked. I never brought up the scar again. We couldn't rewrite her past, but the future we created would be fresh and new. It'd be beautiful, and we created it together. I had my hand in creating all our happiest memories, and she in turn became a part of all of mine. Ruby tried to forget. I think most of the time she succeeded, but sometimes thin cracks split up from her past, shattering into her present like lightning. The first time it happened was when I told her about my family. I told her that I had been born in Minnesota, and something on her face changed. Minnesota? 
Where in Minnesota? Hmm? I remember thinking it was odd, that strange dullness that came into her eyes. I learned quickly that the dullness was the pain of a scar that had never really healed. Oh, I don't remember. Some little town somewhere? We didn't live there very long, anyway. She relaxed, and the vibrancy sprung back into her blue eyes. I didn't remember the incident until after... everything. The second time was much more serious. This time, I could see the cracks run a little deeper, spread a little farther. We'd been heading toward the dining hall together when she slapped her palm to her forehead. Oh, crap! I have to go to the financial aid office quick! I forgot! Hey, Anna, you want to come with me? It should only take a second. They said I needed to clear up some paperwork. So we found ourselves sitting in the waiting room gossiping about something stupid. When the receptionist called out, Ruby Fick. Ruby's face drained of color. Her eyes had that strange dead look in them. But this time there was something almost inhuman smoldering underneath the surface. She stalked up to the counter, with me following in her wake, a sense of unease growing in the pit of my stomach. What did you say? Ruby's voice was soft and sharp as her eyes fell like lead on the poor receptionist. The slight woman looked pretty taken aback. I called for Miss Ruby Thick. Is that you? My name is not Thick. The words seethed out of her throat like smoke, filling the air with poisonous tension. The woman's mouth hung slack as Ruby continued. My name is Somers. Ruby Somers. I told the school that my name is Somers. The receptionist looked back at her notes. Well, that actually seems to be the problem with your financial aid. Regardless of the name you want to use, the name on the form is- I don't care about the fucking form! Ruby's voice cracked into the air like a whip and a fire burned out in her eyes. I grabbed her by the arm and pulled her out of the office, terrified that the receptionist was gonna call campus security. Once we finally got outside, I grabbed Ruby by the shoulders and stared hard into her eyes. They'd begun to return to normal, but I could see the strain. I could see the cracks. Ruby? What happened back there? Why did they get your name wrong? Don't, Anna. Ruby wouldn't meet my gaze, but I didn't budge. Ruby, I'm your best friend. You can tell me these things. I'm here to protect you, remember? Besides... The thought made me uncomfortable, but I spoke it out loud anyway. My name is Fick. Isn't that odd? It's not odd, Ruby said fiercely. Fick is a common name, one of the most common in the U.S. I don't go by it anymore, so what does it matter? I don't like it, Anna. Can't we just forget it? Forget. Y you know, that's what Ruby thought she needed. To forget. And now, I wonder, did I do wrong? Was I wrong to try to help her? Despite these few instances, Ruby and I remained close. She had a place in my heart that, until she got there, I didn't realize existed. She made me realize parts of myself, and I thought that was really... beautiful. I really loved her, you know? As much as anyone can love another person. Well... Everything led up to Christmas break. At Christmas break, everyone returns to their hometowns, to their families and their past lives. That's why I offered to let Ruby stay with my family for the break. She wanted to forget. We could help her do that. She could have a happy family Christmas with me, another memory to add to our collection. She was pretty excited to be going with me, as we rode the bus a few hours back to Oklahoma, she asked me, Hey, what should I call your parents? Well, I just call them Mom and Dad, I teased. She rolled her eyes at me, but I could see the laughter in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very funny. What are their names? In an offhand sort of way, I said, My mom's name is Rachel. She's from Iowa. My dad's name is Brian. He's the one from Minnesota. I got to this point in my introductions when I noticed that something was wrong with Ruby again. You said... Brian? Brian Thick? Um, yeah, why? 
She turned to look out of the window, her voice coming from some faraway place. Oh, no reason. Just curious. The rest of the trip was spent in silence. Ruby was somewhere in her own head, and it made me uneasy. But that was all right. Soon she'd be home with me and everything would be fine. I was so excited to share my home with her. Ruby put on a sweet face when we saw my parents again. They'd remember her from move-in day. How could you forget a face like Ruby's? You couldn't. We chatted in the living room for a while, Ruby, Dad, and I, while Mom finished up supper. So, Anna tells me you guys originally lived in Minnesota. Whereabouts did you live? My family's from there, too. I looked at Ruby, shocked. She'd never told me that before. I mean, she'd never told me anything about her past. My dad looked a little uncomfortable, too. Maybe it was just my imagination, but I thought I saw tension play out across his eyes. Oh, just, uh, just a little town called Slayton. Uh, heard of it? Ruby's eyes told me she definitely heard of it. Those cracks were yawning deep into an abyss that I'd only glimpsed before. Nope. Can't say I have. Must be further south. Dad looked relieved, and Ruby smiled. The tension dissipated, and they chatted happily. While I was left feeling distinctly uncomfortable. Out of place. We went to bed that night, and I thought maybe a night's sleep would help. Ruby was probably just tired. Maybe something about Christmas was stressful for her. Of course, it's a holiday, and she clearly doesn't spend holidays with her family. It would take time for her to adjust. I'd wait. That was the night. The last night I spent with Ruby. I woke up around 3 a.m., the witching hour. The moonlight was streaming in through my childhood window as I shifted in my bed. Ruby was sleeping down the hall, and I wondered for half a second if I should go check on her. Except I didn't have to. As I sat up to readjust my pillow, I saw the glint of her eyes staring at me from the door. Ruby? Uh, is something wrong? Her hand shifted nervously, and something glinted at me. Brian Fick. I've heard that name before. Ruby's voice was soft. That's how I knew something was wrong. Ruby was never soft, you know? She was always bright and gleaming. That softness was a sickness she carried deep down inside her. Like rot. I heard it a lot growing up. Growing up in Slayton, Minnesota. I stood up, not really sure what I was going to do. But I ended up not having a choice. The glint in Ruby's hand was long and thin, and it set my hackles up when I realized it was a knife. Why did you leave Slayton, Anna? Why did you go? Can you tell me that? I... I, I don't know what you Did you're... you know you have an uncle, Anna? I blinked back at her, confused. N no, I, I don't. My mother only has sisters, and my dad's an only child. Is he now? She stepped toward me. I stumbled back against my nightstand. She was running the blade of the knife along her fingers as though she were using it to taste her own skin. Haven't you ever met your father's family, Anna? My... my grandparents on that side have already passed away, so... Something was beginning to feel very wrong about this, and it wasn't just Ruby and her knife. Something felt strange. Ruby shuffled another step toward me. Peter Fick. That's your uncle, Anna. I wonder if your father and Peter were ever very close. My head was spinning. No, no, this wasn't right. Something about this was wrong. I wanted to call out, but something stopped me. Something in my brain said, no, stop, you have to hear this. You know, the thing about Peter is that he's a monster. Not like in those old urban legends you like to read either. No. He's the kind of monster that only a human can be. The kind of monster that likes to torture his own family. Her hand traced slowly up her scar. The other hand gripped the handle of the knife even tighter. He's a murderer too, you know. She whispered, those eyes filling up with the darkness spilling out of her cracks. He murdered his wife and her mother. 
in front of their only child. She raised the knife slowly as I hitched my breath. His blood runs in your veins, Anna. Just like it runs in mine. She swung at me. And I pounced. I screamed for my father as I pinned Ruby to the floor. She was far gone at that point, but I was still stronger than she was. My father held her down while my mother called the cops. His face spelled out anguish as she kept screaming. Peter Beck! 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 After the police arrived and took Ruby away, my father broke down to me. We were sitting at the police station, waiting to be questioned, as his head sat heavy in his hands. My mother was pale and ghostly, shadowing him with her hands on his shoulders as he told me the story. Yes, Peter was my brother. I don't consider him as such anymore. His voice was trembling. He was always a bad kid, even when we were growing up. I... I couldn't stand him. He really seemed to have settled down when he got married, but I should have known it couldn't really change him. Soon after the wedding, rumors started spreading throughout Slayton. I heard about what Peter was doing to his wife. Even when they had a kid on the way, I thought she might lose the baby after a few of the <clears throat> incidents. Eventually, I tried to confront Peter, but it was, it was too much. He went crazy, screaming at me to mind my own damn business. The weeks after that became hell. You wouldn't remember, Anna, you'd just been born, but the house was vandalized several times. Peter slashed my tires, started leaving us threats, careful not to leave his name anywhere so we couldn't prove anything, even after we went to the cops. We finally decided it wasn't safe there. I cut off all contact with Peter. We packed our things and left. I haven't been back since. My father took a deep, shuddering breath, his hand crawling up to his shoulder to grasp my mother's hand. <sighs> a few years back, I got a call from an old friend back in Slayton. Peter's wife had tried to divorce him and take their child. They were staying in a hotel for a few days as her mom went down to meet them. She was going to drive them to her house in South Dakota where they'd be safe. He caught them coming out of church. They had been planning to leave right after, his wife and her mother. He shot them on the steps of the church as their child watched. Peter went away for a long time. I'm, I'm sure he's still in jail. He'll probably never get out. But the child. I never asked what happened to it. I should have looked into it. I should have offered to help, but what could I do? For God's sake, it was my own brother that had slaughtered his family. The officer called me in for questioning then, so my father's tale was cut short. But he told me all I needed to know. I sat down in front of the officer, numb and silent. He had to repeat his first few questions several times before they registered. My brain was blasting, one thought on repeat. Ruby was my cousin. Since then, I I've tried to talk to Ruby. I really did. I, I wanted more than anything to help her. But the cracks were too deep, and somehow she fell inside. The girl I knew, the girl I cared about so much, she's gone now. My best friend, the best friend I've ever had, she's gone. You're the same as him, she hissed to me the last time I tried to see her. You're just the same. His blood poisoned you, just like it did me. <laughs> she cackled for a moment, then went silent. She looked around, confused, as though she'd forgotten where she was and how she'd gotten there. Then she saw me and remembered. Stay away from me. I hate you. If you come here again, 
I'll kill you. Ruby was declared unfit to stand trial. She's locked away now. She's locked away, and ironically, it's my fault. Me, the one person who just wanted to help her. Ruby, I just wanted to help you. I'm sorry, I'm crying again. This is the first time I've told anybody about what happened. My, my therapist said it would make me feel better, but... But all I feel is my heart shattering to pieces all over again. I just wish I could make her understand how sorry I am. I, I just wanted to help her forget. Instead, it's because of me that she was forced to remember everything. And now... Now I've lost her forever. <laughs>